It's baffled scholars for two millennia. It is a puzzle made of multi-dimensional elements, an enigma with roots that reach back to the dawning of time, perhaps before. Daniel explained part of it. Ezekiel and Isaiah had glimpses into it. John saw it all for the time of the end. That time is now. Join Derek and Sharon Gilbert on a journey that spans the course of history, from Eden to Mount Hermon, from Hermon to Babel, from Babel to Rome, from Rome to the cross, and from there to us. Biblical prophecy is coming true before your eyes, and to understand it, you must discern the times both then and now. It's time to unravel the threads of this all-encompassing prophetic paradox. It's time to unravel Revelation. Welcome to Unraveling Revelation. I'm Derek Gilbert. I am Sharon Gilbert, and we are delighted that you've chosen to join us today. Of course, we're recording here in the barn, and it's thanks to you. We truly appreciate your generosity. You've helped us turn what was just an empty building for extra stuff we couldn't fit into the house, our yard tractor and more uh, into actual usable office and studio space. It's and incredible. And we keep promising we're going to give you a tour. We just finished uh, uh, filling out the final corner with the shipping office. So we will do a tour of all of that and it will be upcoming probably on our app. Yes, which we encourage you to get because you never know in today's world when some of the free tools that we use to distribute the video content, you know what we're talking about, mm -hmm. might decide that we say something that violates community standards. We don't try to do that. We like the Mars Hill opportunity to we, uh, we preach the gospel, but uh, you guarantee not only that we don't get canceled, but there is a very active messaging section in there, groups who can go in and uh, share prayer requests and pray for one another. And that is, that's really the most active section of the, uh, that little section of the app. It really is. It's forming a virtual congregation. We call it the Fellowship of the King. And we want you to join us there. So download the app. It's free. Mm -hmm. You find it at gilberthouse.org slash app or unravelingrevelation.tv slash app. You know, last week we promised that we were going to talk about cone heads. Yes. Um, and that's just and sort of will. a colloquial term, yeah, that uh, relates yeah, to the head shaping. head shaping that was apparently everywhere in the ancient Near East, but we will get to that next week. Uh, but Because something has happened as we are recording this that we think is related <laughs> to the topic. Yeah, and um, a actually I think that th this is related to another event that took place just last Friday. As we're recording this now, this is uh, just to timestamp this, this is March 27th, and on Friday... Sorry, I keep fidgeting. My back is bothering me today, so bear with me. On Friday the 22nd, and then early yesterday morning, Tuesday the 26th, a couple of events that uh, have dominated the news cycles here over the last few days. Of course, the Friday event was the terrorist attack in Moscow. Yes. At the, uh, the mall, the Crocus City Hall, mm -hmm. which was a music venue and a mall combined. And uh, then on Tuesday morning, very early Tuesday morning, just uh, just outside Baltimore, a cargo ship lost power, drifted into a, the, the Francis Scott Key Bridge and uh, took out one of the main supports, which dropped about half of the bridge into the Patapsco River. Um, thankfully, police were very alert. And when the, the uh, crew on the, on the ship realized they'd lost power and were drifting, they sent out an SOS, a distress That's call. Mayday. Um, yeah. And police on the ends of the bridge managed to stop traffic. Mm -hmm. So sadly, there were six construction workers filling potholes on the bridge. Who did not escape. Yeah, they were on foot. They didn't get off the bridge in time. They dropped into the river, which was like about 48 degrees. And uh, Yeah, so, they were on foot, but I think they had their cars on the bridge. Right. That's how they had, at least there was one car. Some people reported cars crashing into the river and that probably, right. those were probably their cars. Right. I think they are the only ones, and that's tragic. Six people lost their lives, six right. million. But the, um, the impact from the bridge collapse is, is far more significant than um, uh, e the economic impact. Let me put it this way, oh, because yeah. I, don't, I don't want to dismiss the loss of life. I mean, six people whose families are now grieving because of this unexpected tragedy. Mm -hmm. um, uh, again, thanks to the Baltimore Police Department, it could have been much, much worse, but they managed to stop the traffic on the bridge. When you're watching the video, which I'm sure you've seen, it's all over the internet, uh, you can see trucks, cars, 
crossing the bridge up to just a few moments, mm -hmm. the last 30 seconds or so before the ship hit the bridge. So thankfully, it, it, it wasn't worse. It wasn't worse, yes, indeed. Um, however, right now, and you, by the time you watch this, they've been debunked, I pray, but there are some videos on certain social media sites that are purporting that there were explosions mm -hmm. on the bridge. Yeah. I have watched that actual video from CCTV over and over. There were no explosions. However, the videos that are on social media sites are of other events. One of them is the bridge in Ukraine that was blown up. The Kerch Bridge. The Kerch Bridge, yeah. and that did have explosives on it. Right, uh, and... Um... <sighs> So I, I think we can we can only speculate here because we don't have connections inside the intelligence community or inside the militaries. Well, uh, we kind of do. We just haven't contacted them yet. Yeah, we may do that. And, and it may be something where uh, if he knows something, he's not able to divulge to us. Yeah, now, I, I will say this. And, and again, I will say we cannot corroborate this story. But there was a report that came out within a day by investigative journalist Lara Logan, who used to work for CBS 60 Minutes. Great investigator, right. I really admire her. Um, she no longer follows the, the narrative of the corporate media, so she's now been dismissed as a crazy right-wing conspiracy theorist. Join but the club. Join the club. I mean, you, you look us up, on, we, use an artificial intelligence chat bot to ask questions about us, and you'll we're find out that fringe. we're just, we, yeah, we're fringe, we're crazy. Um, anyway, she cites multiple intelligence sources as saying that this was probably a cyber attack on that vessel targeted specifically to take out that particular bridge mm -hmm. because the, the ports at Baltimore, uh, even though overall it's the ninth largest port in the United States, not uh, on the scale of, say, Long Beach or Los Angeles, but it is the number one port in terms of shipping um, automotives, or automobiles rather, and light trucks, farm equipment, diesel. also uh, diesel fuel. Mm -hmm. It's the number one port for importing gypsum, used for Which drywall and ma many other things, uh, for importing sugar. Oh. And, yeah, and it's the also- The hummingbirds will be upset. Yeah, yeah, they might well be. Um, and number two for coal exports, which is a key industry in West Virginia, Pennsylvania, Ohio, um, oh, Illinois, Wyoming. Um, so this was a very important port and it may be shut down, according to Logan, four to five years. Now, if the federal government gets behind this, it may be able to replace the bridge, clear the debris and open up the port sooner mm -hmm. than that. We pray that that's true because um, the other thing is that this bridge was built specifically to move hazardous material. The I-695 bridge, the Key Bridge, interesting. I know it's named for Francis Scott Key, but it is a Key Bridge. He was my ancestor. I'd forgotten that. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Lot, way, way, mm -hmm. way back. War of 1812. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I had an ancestor who was fighting for Baltimore in, in that area in the War of 1812. Oh my goodness. Yeah. So, a lot, of, a lot of history in that part of the world, but still a very important port on the East Coast. And that bridge was specifically built to move hazardous material, diesel, mm -hmm. um, other fuels, propane gas, nitrogen, chemicals, flammable materials, and oversized cargo that can't fit into tunnels will mm -hmm. travel up and down the East Coast on that, uh, on that key bridge. Right. So the question then becomes, is this a strategic attack on the United States? An intentional attack. An intentional um, attack. Boy, I'll tell you, that's why I wanted to talk about this on this particular episode and put the, the head binding next week, mm -hmm. because this struck me as a glimpse into the fall of Inanna and her worldwide commercial system. Right. The whore of Babylon, the order that she is building presently will fall. We know that because the Lord has said it will fall. Well, this is one example of how it might fall if a lot of harbors, main harbors, all were cyber attacked simultaneously. Mm -hmm. Yeah, this is a, uh, I, I, I think this in a, in a broader sense, for a couple of reasons, this involves even more players in the book of Revelation than just Inanna, the whore of Babylon. Mm -hmm. uh, yes, as we talked about in previous weeks, one of the key aspects of the fall of Babylon 
is the uh, the disruption in world trade where mm -hmm. those who sail the sea, you know, shipmasters, the merchants who sell their wares and ship them across the ocean are wailing the fall of Babylon. Mm -hmm. Just as in Ezekiel 27, the uh, the lament over the Prince of Tyre was for um, the the loss of its ships, how the ships have gone down and, and there, there's much wailing and gnashing of teeth. Yes. But this would also seem to relate to Revelation chapter six and a couple of the riders there, the rider on the black horse who we believe represents the ancient god of commerce, uh, Mercury or Hermes or Nabu in the uh, Babylonian pantheon, but also possibly the rider on the red horse, the god of war, because th this occurred to me as I was trying to dig a little deeper into Laura Logan's report and, and see if any of it could be corroborated. Mm -hmm. This, again, th this event on the bridge took place just three days after the attack Friday night into Saturday morning in Moscow. Mm -hmm. So you've got a major terrorist attack with 140 dead at least, um, followed by this massive mm -hmm. disruption that cuts that key I-95 corridor up and down the East Coast. Yes, bearing in mind that Putin has blamed Ukraine for the Crocus Hall event. And who supports Ukraine? Right, exactly. We do. That, that's exactly my point. Now, is Logan's reporting correct? Are her sources correct? Or are her sources feeding her information that they want to get out into the public to raise public uh, emotions? Mm -hmm. To say, you know, how dare they do this to us? Uh, let's, you know, cry havoc and let's slip the dogs of war. Or to give us that idea so that when a bigger event it, uh, right. happens that we all assume that's what it is. Exactly. And these things may not even, these, these things may be happening. And, and again, the human actors may not even be aware that they're being used or played in I these events because the principalities, yeah, principalities and powers, uh, according to Paul, are who we're wrestling with, who we're contending with here. And this may be something that is being stirred up now by these writers. And we try very hard not to read prophetic fulfillment into every single headline. But when you see things like this, again, the event in, in Russia and Russia dismissing, uh, and I talked about this on, on Skywatch TV, the, the Russian media did not follow the Western reports, which almost immediately says, well, this is ISIS-K or mm -hmm. isis Khorasan, which is a splinter off of the main group of the Islamic State that's been active in Afghanistan for uh, the last 10 years. Russia has not, the, the Russian media has not reported that. And as you n mentioned, mm -hmm. Vladimir Putin has now just openly now accused the Ukrainians mm -hmm. of being behind it. He was just reelected. He doesn't have to do something that keeps him in office. To stir up public support. He can start rebuilding his country. Right helping the economy, but instead he's doing this. Why? Well, again, maybe principalities and powers behind the scenes that are, are prodding him. Pushing certain, him to do something like, that like a hook, makes no sense. Like a hook in the jaw. Yes, exactly. Oh, exactly. Okay. Exactly. Wow. Wow. Well, let's, let's maybe Take touch on the, the Ezekiel 38, 39 implications yes. of that. Yeah. Unraveling Revelation continues. Summer reading season is just around the corner. We want to help you get ready. You can buy fiction. You can buy nonfiction through the Gilbert House store, whichever you want. All of our books are 40% off, 40%. That includes all eight novels of the Red Wing mm -hmm. Saga. Book nine is coming probably early summer. My two novels. And then, of course, all of our nonfiction stuff, mm -hmm. including our most recent books, Giants, Gods, and Dragons, The Second Coming of Saturn, and Veneration, a deep dive into the cult of the Nephilim. April and May, you get 62 days. Yeah, no, absolutely. 61. That's April only has 30. <laughs> Regardless, through the end of May, 40% off on all of our books at the Gilbert House store. Available only online. Go to gilberthouse.org slash store. You'll find all the prices slashed on our books. 40% off gilberthouse.org slash store. And thank you for your prayers and support. 
Welcome back to Unraveling Revelation. I'm Derek Gilbert. I'm Sharon Gilbert, and I'm sneaking the coffee over here because, well, Grace isn't here right now with us. She's in the backyard keeping Glory company. And keeping her from... <laughs> She's babysitting. <laughs> She's puppy sitting. Yes. Um, Amazing Grace Coffee is an incredible blend that we named Amazing Grace, and we, uh, we sort of did a tribute to her with cookies and cream because she is cookies and cream colored. She's black, but she's got that white blaze down her chest that, um, very striking. She's a beautiful, She beautiful really is. Dog. Oh, and, and she is such a daddy's girl. When I, I come out here to the barn to work, she's got to be here. Otherwise, she, she gets very upset. Glory is mine. Yeah, she uh, loves to snug in with mommy. She does. Um, but we would like to tell you, you can go to gilberthouse.org slash store, and you can find this coffee and others. Yes, it's from Kevlar Joe's, a, a veteran-owned business here in Missouri. The links take you directly to the Kevlar Joe's mm -hmm. site where you can order these beans. Cookies and cream. Uh, there's a Sumatran blend that we called Snarling Dachshund in honor of our late Sam T. Dachshund. He loved coffee and he loved Sumatra, so it's uh, named for him. Yep. And then we've got a dark roast Colombian called Derek's Bunker Buster, and uh, that is our favorite because we like a coffee that just kind of slaps you in the face in the morning. If you up. can't slice your coffee, it's not strong. It's enough. not strong. No, enough. this is a really wonderful yep. coffee. And then there's an another one. Morning Glory is coming, so look for that. Go to GilbertHouse.org slash store. Amen. Well, uh, again, the uh, anytime Russia is involved in any kind of a conflict, we start looking at the Gog-Magog conflict. And we've, we've talked about mm -hmm. this in, in the past. If you go into the archives at unravelingrevelation.tv or our YouTube channel, um, unraveling, which is youtube.com slash at unravelingrevelation, you can find the program on Gog of Magog. We believe that Gog is the Old Testament conception of Antichrist. And when we get into Revelation 19, we'll explain why the War of Gog and Magog is Armageddon. This is a spirit entity yeah. that either inhabits or uses a human being. Right. Gog is often identified with Russia because of the... Uh, uttermost North. Right. In, in Ezekiel 38 and 39, he comes from the uttermost North, mm -hmm. which when you look at a map from Israel, uttermost north is Russia, but the term in Hebrew actually refers to a mountain, Yarkate Tsefon, Mount Tsefon, which is the mountain that was sacred to Baal. But as we discussed in the um, programs about El, the creator god of the Canaanites, who was also Molech and Dagon and Enlil and Saturn and Kronos, etc., uh, that mountain was apparently sacred to El before it became the mountain sacred to Baal. Well, that makes a whole lot of sense because the mountain that We've seen several places where the mountain originally is sacred to El, Shemyaza, mm -hmm. uh, Saturn, whatever you want to call him. And then the sun right. takes over when daddy is thrown into, thrown into the, the abyss. Right. So that, according to the scholar Edward Lipinski, is probably what happened. That it was Mount Saphon, first sacred to El, later sacred to Baal also connected to Zeus in the Greek pantheon, also the Hurrian storm god, uh, mm -hmm. Tarhunta, who's just another name for Satan. Zeus, Jupiter, Baal, Satan, right. Mm -hmm. And that is where the Antichrist, Gog, will rally his troops and bring them against Israel. Now, Russia will be part of that coalition because what Ezekiel was communicating in Ezekiel 38 and 39 is that the whole world is coming against Jerusalem. Mm -hmm. But when we see this uh, and we see Russia apparently stirring things up, um, you know, is it possible that the Ukrainian special intelligence services were part of this, this attack? I suppose so, but it's also possible that Russian intelligence services want to make people believe that it was the Ukrainian intelligence services, just as the intelligence sources talking to Laura Logan may want her to communicate to us that this was the work of some foreign state actor. There are so many games and so many layers right. that it's very difficult to know 100%. Right. And at the end of the day, as Christians, we have to step back and say, okay, who benefits from this? Mm -hmm. The principalities and powers who are arraigned against their creator and mm -hmm. against us who have claimed Jesus Christ as our Lord and Savior. So we've got the... Uh, the, the entities, the, the god of war, Chemosh, Ares, Mars, same entity, different names, mm -hmm. who would certainly love to see more bloodshed. And you've got the, uh, the rider on the black horse, uh, Nabu, Hermes, Mercury, mm -hmm. who is disrupting trade for the purpose of 
creating scarcity and want, the, the scales that he carries are actually a yoke. Mm -hmm. So it's it's for the purpose of enslaving us. Yeah, zugos, and uh, it's like the kind of thing you'd put over an, the neck of oxen in order mm -hmm. to get them pulling a plow. Using and the really, economy to control us. Right, exactly. And that is what they are <coughs> trying to do. This, so these events, the um, the crackdown on freedoms that will that we've already seen. Mm -hmm. uh, we're, we're living in a, a country where we proudly proclaim our First Amendment rights to free speech, except that there is a, a, a growing and increasingly vocal group that said, no, no, that does not include hate speech. And hate speech is anything that we don't like. And governments of the world are all of them, all the, they're all crafting bills right now yes. to take away our rights in order to protect right. our rights. Yeah. We, we have to kill democracy to save it, in other yeah. words. We have uh, to pass the bill to read it. The, in fact, the police in Scotland, uh, just a couple of weeks ago, as you're seeing this, admitted that they will have to pull officers away from investigating things like burglaries and assault to chase down people who post things on social media. It's been going on allowed. in London for a long time. Right, the police right. cannot investigate those things, so they go, they go just unsolved. Which means that the, the uh, perpetrators feel that they have an open, you know, door that they can just do these things. Well, sure, and, and we see that around the, uh, the, the world as well. Uh, here in the United States, our major cities have basically become crime-free zones because they don't report the crimes, and uh, major retailers are, are mm -hmm. fleeing cities. There was just a story out that uh, Westfield Malls, uh, the owners, that, that big conglomerate that owns malls all across the country, breaking its lease in New York City at uh, the biggest subway depot in mm. the city because they can't keep stores there. Retailers, surprisingly enough, don't want to put stores in places that are too dangerous for their workers and where they can't make any money because crime shoplifting isn't prosecuted. Imagine yeah. that. Well, Chaos. Yes, exactly. And the fall of this bridge, back to that event, to me is a microcosm of the macrocosm that's going to happen when Babylon falls, when Babel falls, because what we see in the Great Reset, and they've rebranded it, the yeah. World Economic Forum has rebranded it, but the idea is, is order out of chaos. Right. And this is going to be order out of chaos. The chaos event will happen to create the, the need for a new system. Right. Well, this is a... This is a lie. This is a, a, a false version of what the Lord is going to do when he returns. He's truly going to bring in new order. But this false version of it, led by the Antichrist, mm -hmm. is going to happen. And I think we're going to see the entire economic system just fall all at once. I, I think you're absolutely right. We um, argued in a, in a previous program that we believe the spirit that will inhabit the human we call Antichrist is chaos, is mm -hmm. Leviathan. Mm -hmm. uh, the imagery depicted in the beginning of Revelation chapter 13, the multi-headed beast, mm -hmm. chimeric sort of beast, that is how dragons were depicted in ancient Mesopotamia. And they had seven heads. And seven heads, right. So when occultists are saying order ab chaos, order out of chaos, they may not understand quite what they're saying, but as uh, I discovered in the research for the book, The uh, the uh, the Day the Earth Stands Still, uh, Josh Peck actually wrote the section of the book on the return of chaos, but it is something that uh, chaos magicians who've taken the teachings of uh, the 19th, 20th century occultist mm -hmm. Aleister Crowley and developed it further, they somehow think that, well, they they believe two things. First, that chaos is returning Typhon, the Greek mm -hmm. name for the chaos monster, um, and that somehow they can develop a system to control chaos, systemized chaos. There's an old myth, and I think it's actually a myth in multiple civilizations, that the great dragon is subdued and then divided into parts, right. and the world is created out of the dragon. Mm -hmm. In Psalm 74, there's a polemic against that. In fact, I just looked this up yesterday because uh, it, it came up in a conversation where the psalmist writes this, Yet God, my King, is from of old, working salvation in the midst of the earth. You divided the sea, which is 
in Hebrew, Yam, the Canaanite name of Leviathan. You divided the sea by your might. You broke the heads of the sea monsters on the waters. You crushed the heads of Leviathan. You gave him as food for the creatures of the wilderness, mm. which is a polemic against the Babylonian creation myth where their chief god Marduk divided Tiamat, their chaos monster, mm -hmm. and created the sky and the earth from that. Yes. The psalmist, um, which is uh, Asaph. Mm -hmm. I love Asaph. He uh, said, no, no, it was God who actually defeated Leviathan. But in, uh, uh, in Revelation 21, as we see, when the new heaven and the new earth are created, the sea, a representation of chaos, is no more. Oh, that so, is just so... When, when you and I realized that for the first time, and those of you who are maybe hearing this idea for the first time, it just, it was like every puzzle piece suddenly fell into place. And I had this peace rush over me. I thought, that's it. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. That is it. Our ancient enemies are no more. Right. So you've got the Antichrist, who we think is Leviathan, chaos. You've got uh, the destroyer, Apollyon, Abaddon, who mm -hmm. comes out for five months toward the end. You've got the other entities there. You've got the Inanna, the Hora Babylon, the uh, riders on the horses, Apollo, mm -hmm. Nabu, um, Hermi, or rather, uh, Chemosh, Mars, Ares, and Thanatos, death, with Hades following behind. Multiple entities that are at work here. And we believe that if we take a naturalistic approach to understanding the book of Revelation, we miss the fact that we're in the middle of a supernatural war. Mm -hmm. The Hebrew prophets understood this. The early church understood this. Oh yes, Paul writes about it in the book of Ephesians. He right. tries very hard to get the Ephesians to understand We're that. not wrestling against human opponents. We wrestle not against flesh and blood. That's what that means. But the good news is that as we read, and we will eventually someday get to Revelation 21 and 22, but when we read the end of the book, we see that they are defeated. They're thrown into the lake of fire. They are destroyed. They are no more. There's a new heaven and a new earth. And we will live with our Lord and Savior for eternity Hallelujah. in glorious resurrected bodies. No more aches and pains. Amen. No more failing eyesight and broken teeth nope, and things. No more backaches. No more backaches. Oh, yes. Thank you, Jesus. Will there be coffee in heaven? You know what? I don't know, but there is eating. Yeah, that's true, because there There's is a, a marriage, yeah, marriage supper, yeah. Mm -hmm. And here's the thing that we always say, you look, if it's not there, it's only because there's something better. Amen. So um, we think about that uh, and look forward to that day. Come quickly, Lord Jesus. Yes, we've got a tough road ahead, and that's the reason we decided to take this sort of detour today to mm -hmm. discuss a couple of disturbing events. We are, grieve for the families of those who lost their lives pray in Moscow and in Baltimore. Yes. And uh, we just pray for the peace so of Jerusalem many, over 140 in the meantime. 40 people dead. Yep. In Moscow. And we continue to pray for the peace of Jerusalem. And that. All of our friends that, there, yes. Yeah. So, we uh, thank you for taking time out of your schedule to watch or listen wherever you may be and uh, this is Unraveling Revelation. Unraveling Revelation is a viewer-supported outreach of Gilbert House Ministries. Follow us online at unravelingrevelation.tv and gilberthouse.org. That's where you'll find our weekly Bible study, the Gilbert House Fellowship. Join us as we study the Bible every week, verse by verse, in chronological order. We'd love to hear from you. Contact us through our websites or drop us a line at P.O. Box 78, Crane, Missouri, 65633.